What's up guys, in this video, we're gonna be looking at Ben Shapiro's guide to defend yourself in any argument. Make sure you guys like and share this video if you found it interesting. Let's get right into it. Ben Shapiro is one of the most famous and skilled political debaters out there, and even if you're not into politics, his arguments are fun to watch. In this video, I wanna explore why Ben is so talented in debates. Specifically, I'm gonna give you seven techniques that you can use no matter what side of an argument you represent, even if you're on the wrong side. Let's begin then with Ben's defensive debate tactics, starting with catching non-arguments. And that's because not everything that sounds persuasive actually constitutes a valid argument. So when people lean on authority in arguments, Ben knows to call them out on it, like in this example. We urge you to listen to the American public and to the law enforcement community in support of ban on the third of manufacture of these weapons. That was Ronald Reagan. Okay, so. I can disagree with Ronald Reagan. You keep one of the great right-wing presidents of modern times agreed with me. So? That's, a, that's the appeal to authority that a lot of people use and don't realize that it's a fallacy. Just because someone credible or someone popular or whatever authority figure has an opinion about something doesn't automatically make that thing correct because they had that opinion. Another common debate tactic that maybe isn't done on purpose and doesn't constitute a valid argument is getting emotional, particularly when the other person gets upset or offended. Now, when Piers Morgan did that, Ben wisely didn't engage him because simply being offended doesn't prove anything. He's me standing on the graves of the children that died there. How dare you? I've seen you do it repeatedly, Piers. Like I say, how dare you? I mean, you can keep saying that, but you've done it repeatedly. What you do, and I've seen you do it on, on the program. The late Christopher Hitchens put the same idea rather bluntly. If someone tells me that I've hurt their feelings, I, I, I say, well, I'm still waiting to hear what your point is. Right. Especially relevant now in society, like the appealing to people's emotions that we're seeing constantly. Just because you're emotional about something does not make it correct. That's such a common thing people are doing now. Like you made this person feel bad. You made this person feel insecure. You're bad. They're good. Argument over. You made that person cry. And then people start to weaponize their emotions and tears and their victimhood. And you should always be calling people out on it. And from there, you can segue into the third defensive tactic that we are covering in this video, which is pushing for specifics. People often hold very broad opinions very strongly without necessarily being able to articulate what they mean concretely. So when Ben is grappling with a very broad spanning charge, he takes the necessary first step of pushing that other person to provide specific examples. I don't know what the Republican beliefs are. I mean, you're a young guy, but you certainly remember two years back when their were, beliefs were completely the opposite of what they are now. Well, they were for free trade. This is absolutely critical. Do not get wrapped up in defending generalized statements, even if you don't like them. Because if any sort of blanket label is asserted against your position or it's large institutions that are being branded one way or another, if you try to defend against that single phrase, you are already buying into an argument you don't understand. And that would be absurd. So instead, push the other person to relate exactly what they mean specifically. Similarly, and lastly, on the defensive side, Ben knows his arguments inside and out. So he doesn't get sucked into defending points that his argument doesn't require. For instance, in this next clip, Ben is talking about how Trump will say outrageous things Things, knowing that it sets the media ablaze. And his point is that Trump knows what he's doing and he does it on purpose in order to control the news cycle. Now, when Don Lemon responds saying that Trump shouldn't be doing that, Ben doesn't bother defending the morality of his actions. He's only talking about the purpose of them. He says some things that are outrageous, like people in the media aren't patriotic, knowing that people in the media are, are immediately going to turn it up to 12 on the, on the Richter scale. But Ben, don't you and think he should be truthful in his comments, even if, he's, even if he's funny, and if you give yes, him that, course. should he be truthful? And, and he wasn't. Uh, of course. If, if they start throwing ad hominems and start going at you rather than the, the point you're making, you just, like, the discussion's over. One of the big ways that I see him stump his opponents is through the use of snuck premises. Essentially, you introduce the exact point of contention as a given, and that's through the clever use of language. Income inequality in the United States is also quite high, right? There are people who are Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos, and then there's the, the, the local checker at your grocery store. But if the local checker at your grocery store is getting richer, then it seems to me they have nothing particularly to complain about in how the economy is operating. They don't have a right to Jeff Bezos' money. They don't have a right to Bill Gates' money any more than Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos has a right to their money. What is the snuck premise in this case? It would be the idea that it is their money. A socialist or a communist might see the money that an owner of the means of production has, aka another rich person, as being stolen. So it wouldn't be their money in the minds of a socialist or a communist. But when Ben assumes the idea that it is their money, he makes a point that again, his opponents might find disagreeable, but they won't really know where to poke the hole because they adopted his premise as soon as he said it. I'm gonna leave this for now and move to another effective rhetorical tool that I see from Ben. It's moving from the abstract to the concrete, and it looks like this. I think that focusing on poverty is a good thing to do. I think focusing on income inequality is not a good thing to do because there's no correlation between income inequality and relative rates of poverty. Right? There's tremendous income inequality in a lot of places on planet Earth. In fact, in all places on planet Earth. If you go to Sudan, there's gonna be a rich warlord there and then there's gonna be a bunch of people living on $6 a year. This works because the specific example seems to prove the broader point that preceded it, even though a single example cannot prove a rule. It is useful shorthand for persuasion and explanation. And when you add an element of humor to the specific piece that you are saying, it makes it even more persuasive. 
Adding humor just makes your ideas more palatable. And the final piece for this video, at least, is that you want to emphasize the conditions under which you would agree with your opponent. What evidence would you need? Now, we previously saw Ben do this with regards to institutional racism in a previous clip. Racist behavior is evil. I want to fight it with you, but I can't fight it if you're not, if you're not showing me what it is. Here he is talking about Trump's impeachment and the Mueller investigations. But, dude, I'm happy to wait for the Mueller indictments. Okay. If they come down and they target but, Trump, I'm happy to see him impeached. But, but I need to see evidence. Where's okay, the evidence? But just throw it in the trash. And if he throws it in the trash or quashes the Mueller investigation, then yes, impeachment should be on the table. Thank you, Ben. There you have it. Seven reasons that Ben Shapiro is so difficult to best in a debate and seven ways that you can win even if you're wrong. Let me know what you guys think. Comment below. Are these good techniques? Make sure to like the video, share the video, and subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Peace.